Hey, this is John from Monster Fight Club, and with me is Sophie, one of our amazing graphics artists. Hi. So what are we doing today, John? Today we are going to talk about yesterday's Kickstarter. So, um, Monster Scenery Metropolis went live yesterday. Um, we funded about midnight last night, so I think that took about eight hours, which was great. Um, this is an interesting one because it's something that is completely different, I think, from a lot of things that other people have seen. So um, for everybody that's back to Kickstarter, thank you very much. Um, we, got a, we got a couple of, of questions that people are asking about scale and how do you put it together and, and that sort of stuff. So we wanted to address that right now. Um, the plan is every day we're gonna make a couple of little short videos and um, we will put some raw stuff up like this and then we will also go back and clean it up so we can do some short turnaround things to get people excited about why this is so cool and why we're super excited about it. Um, so this whole concept was an idea that we really started thinking about almost two years ago um, when we formed Monster Fight Club. And the idea was, um, you know, I've been playing with lasers for almost 20 years. So making laser cut terrain is something that um, I'm one of the guys that kind of pioneered it back in the day. So that concept takes it to the next level, then how do you color it? And then using lasers to make terrain, you put stuff together, then you have, it doesn't look right because one material never does it. You kind of need to mix and match things. So what we decided to do was try some stuff. Um, we tried all kinds of different color options and we ended up going with a technology I had to catch up with us. So things that I wanted to do 20 years ago, um, now we finally get to do. So what our terrain is, is basically CNC and laser cut hardboard. Um, a lot of people you hear like MDF and stuff like that. Hardboard is different than MDF. Um, hardboard is a very dense material. Um, it's generally a three millimeter and eighth an inch right in that area. Um, think pegboard. So you got pegboard and you got the holes in it that's been punched out. Um, this is pegboard without the holes in it. And then there's also another process that makes it even more durable. In order to put color and texture on top of the terrain, um, you can't just quote print on hardboard. There has to be a special coating. It took us a while to figure out that special coating to make it durable and strong that you can put colors and textures on and be able to withstand it. So we figured it out and we were super excited when it happened. Um, I went nuts because I have a lot of really cool toys and we ended up with Metropolis, which is behind us. So back on the table in Metropolis is a lot of the prototype stuff that we've been doing. We've been ripping the table apart, putting it back together, making different things so we can do the photo shoots and getting ready for this Kickstarter. And I think one of the biggest things going into the, to designing this was making sure that it was really easy to take apart and put back together fast. And we've seen that with yeah. the table behind us. So today we're kind of gonna show you how it goes together and just how easy it is to take this all apart, store it, and then get it back up in time for game night. So, get these boxes out of the way. So this was our last Kickstarter, Monster Scenery, which we are excited to say has been delivered to to everybody, we were just told that the last people that had to get delivered to was up in Canada. Yeah. Sounds Poor like Canadians. yes, that's it's been resolved. It sounds like you guys should have it, um, and we're super excited to announce that it is starting to pop up into retail stores everywhere. So um, check with your local game store if they have the terrain. Support them. Back them up. Yeah, and if you haven't seen it yet, uh, check us out. The Kickstarter is archived, but obviously we have all of our stuff at monsterfightclub.com. They're super cool. Check them out. So, buildings-wise, let's talk about buildings. So, we have this building set up right here, and we were talking about what it was made out of. So, here is a basic plate. The plate is hard, strong. In the Kickstarter video, there's a picture of me. I am six foot seven, 240 pounds of me standing on top of this very cube set on the ground. It is very strong. This isn't paper and cardboard. Um, it's designed to last for a very long time. So you got these panels, very hard. There are three different sizes. There is a small size, which is 140 by 140 millimeters. There is a medium size. All of them, notice there's a, there's a theme here. They're all about the same height. All 140, we call this the medium. This is 220 millimeters. 
and then there's another one and then we have the large size which is almost a foot it's uh 300 millimeters so these are the three sizes we have when you take these together and you connect them you end up with all kinds of different modular options to put things apart and take them back together um, notice there's some holes here as it goes through and looking at the buildings you got holes that go in there's some places that don't have holes the cool thing about the holes is that all of these were basically scryed so these are strong right now when you first get it it is essentially perforated so when you sit there and look at it it is a solid piece so it'll be like this if you want to make a hole for a miniature to look through so i'm going to take one of our miniatures over here and i'm going to hold it up now when you put the floor in along this line everything was set up to be that way you can kind of see your guys sitting on the inside here so and, yeah what's great is if you're indecisive like me uh and then you decide later that you don't really want a building with all the windows punched out it is super easy to actually pop them back in uh, and get sort of that original printed wall again so, so i am sitting here now and i am popping some wall pieces out you pop these out these are also really cool little pieces that if you go in and take these elements, you can lay them on the top <laughs> and suddenly you're ending up with skylights or you're ending up with solar panels or whatever it is that you want to think about as you're going through it. When you're done with this, if you decide you want to put them back in, you just kind of come over here like this, line it up, and the press fit is really strong. You can put it in there if they stay put. Um, if you go in and out, in and out over time, They'll start to loosen up a little bit, but you know, like anything, if you take care of it, it'll last forever. I've still, I say forever. <laughs> I have I have models on this table. Some of the new stuff that we've done for um, Cyberpunk Red. Um, we got some of the new Crisis models. We have um, we have some. God, my old school GW. Mm -hmm. This guy is probably twenty five years old, maybe. Um, something interesting about looking at these, you know. The, the scale differences over time where the models started off kind of at a 25 mil scale and they kept going up from there. The reason I have these models here on the table, these are all from my personal collection. Um, I wanted to show scale. The second question we've had besides, you know, how do you put them together, take them apart, is what scale are your buildings? Um, will they work for the crisis models? Will they work for GW models? Do they, are they designed for the cyberpunk models? Do they work with warlords models? Do they work with Mantix models for the, the really cool Walking Dead models that are out there? Um, we made this very generic. It's not themed for any one thing. We made a timeline basically going back from, you know, the early, early, early 20th century. And then as we change the graphics and start adding little details and moving forward, uh, it will set different timelines. Um, so before we go about scale, let's talk about putting buildings to apart together. So we've talked about the, the sizes. Now let's talk about the cubes. So we're going to, we're going to do this a little bit different. So right now you see the building all put together. We're going to take the building apart and then we are going to talk about the pieces and put it back together. The beauty of this terrain is that that entire city behind me that's sitting back there, you can box that up into a box that's about this big when you're done. It's very small. Um, it, it's dense, it's heavy. Um, the hardboard is strong. So when you get a lot of it and you stack it up, it's like carrying around, a, carrying around some books. But that adds to the durability of it, that adds to the strength of it, that lets you stack things up you know, I think the one back there is about three foot tall, the one in the center. Um, but we've gone up and touched the ceiling for some promo shots that we'll show you later because uh, it's, why not? <laughs> and I think carrying a box of it around is a lot easier than having buildings you'd have to sort of carefully package and make sure they don't break. It just totally collapses. So at the end of the day, you're done playing. Um, these are one of our game mats from our last Kickstarter. This is a 22 by 30 inch size. Um, we decided to, so we did double-sided here. We've made new ones to go along with this. We have a bunch of prototypes, but we don't have any physicals yet that we can show. Hopefully they're, hopefully we'll get them from the factory that's doing the printing for us and we'll be able to show that off in a couple of weeks. But the building comes right off. It's easy. Notice the slide. That is the floor on the inside moving when I tipped it upside down. When things are stacked this, it's very strong. 
So I can take figures, put them on top, it's strong. You can put stuff on there and your guys can run around and, and play. The other neat thing about this is that if you sit here and look at the top, I'm gonna set this like this. The top opens up, notice it's double-sided depending on the graphic that you want on the top. Let's go through it. Notice how quick that is. So now I can sit here, I'll turn it around here where we have a hole. And let's see here, let's take, let's take Black Widow here, sit her inside. And she fits perfectly inside. The scale for this works really good for there. So when we built the buildings, we were talking about scale. Um, we started with a 32 millimeter scale on the mill, which is about, I think it's 154 scale, is, is in the modeling world where things are. Um, because people are different sizes and everything else, it really works well from everything from about a true 28 up to almost, you know, some people call these 40 mil scale. I think they're more like 38. Um, it really depends on how you measure scale. Some people measure scale from the bottom to the eye. Some people go from the bottom of the foot to the top. Some people measure from the bottom else. For me, it's just, does it look cool or not? Um, and I think this works good with everything that we have on the table. So the inside is cool too, because you can take off the inside. So I'm gonna turn this around a little bit. You see these little shelves that are built into our clips that go around the outside. This can go in, slide, and now that's durable on the inside. And notice there are holes and connectors. Um, there's a lot of different prototypes here with some various sizes over time, but we've got it worked out now. But you can snap ladders into here. You can put um, stairways. You can put all kinds of different stuff. So this is awesome for like, if you've got a multi-story battle going on, you can totally take things apart and go in there as needed. Yep. Uh, so it's awesome. So laying the buildings again, I'm gonna do this real fast. Put the roof back on. So now we've got two buildings. Now we got a building you can stack on the top. Now you got a building you can stack on the other side. Part of this, notice that the top here is reset. Notice the top here has these little locking nubs around the outside. When we designed the system, we designed it that you don't need these locking nubs to do anything. But if you want to stack the buildings and start going up with them, we recommend taking these nubs, hooking them into these little markers that are right here, and that allows you to raise the floor high enough so that when you put the next level on, it can sit on top of that locking nub and isn't gonna slide off the table when it goes through. Um, and that was our little bit of innovation that we did from there. In addition to this, we also have little grooves that are on the inside here. Um, I'll talk about the grooves later because that is a cool surprise that hopefully gets unlocked later in the Kickstarter. So, slip that back in here. Let's go back to here. So it's the end of the day. We finished our game. We want to break this thing down and put it away. How long does it take? I don't know. Let's see. I would say that entire, about a minute maybe? 30 seconds, I would almost argue. <laughs> so now, that nice big piece of terrain that we had sitting over there. Box it up. Yeah, there's an amazing amount of room. So, I know you just got out of SCAD. I did. Just graduated, which is exciting, right in the middle of uh, the pandemic graduation. Very fun. Uh <laughs> So, but now you're here, and um, so we actually changed a lot of stuff since we built this when you were here for your internship last year. So, you actually haven't had a chance to put this back together. I have not. So, let's pretend you just got this in your box of stuff, and I'm just, I don't know, grab, grab four parts. Okay, let's see here. And we'll just take these ones. Okay, cool. Okay, so, 
So the clips, the clips have a little slot on the inside, 90 degrees apart. There are three different levels here. These are used to pinch one side, and then you have this long groove on the other. So it basically forms this lap joint on the inside. The lap joint is important. Two of them together hold it just fine. There's a little bit of angle on it, and that little bit of angle is important because when you set the little bit of angle down by itself, you, can, you can't even perceive it when you're looking at it. But when you take four of them, put them together, and they overlap all the way around, mm -hmm. it almost forms a spring. And when you get to that last one, you're gonna look at it before you connect them and they're gonna be separated. You're gonna bend it, put it into place, and that's what gives it the strength from falling apart. So when you build this building, let's, so let's go ahead and do that and, and see if you can okay. do it without mass destruction. The other part of this is make sure you put the right side up. There is a brick that goes to the bottom, a long brick and a short brick. The long brick goes down. That's all you gotta know. The long right. brick goes down. Okay, that's easy enough. So, before you continue, get your two bricks together, mm -hmm. and it's important to get everything lined up. Okay. So put it on your table, just kind of press, and then go down, and you'll actually hear it pop. There you there go. go. Pops into place. Now that piece is ready. So what I do is I usually do a side and a side, but you do, way, you do it the well, way you do it the way you want. Well, I'm doing it you like do this, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. But it's popping together pretty easily thus far. Let's see here. Okay. That's in. Oh, I'm now understanding why you do it the other way. It can be a little bit tricky to push down without popping out some of the windows, but that's because I'm choosing the most difficult path possible. That's all right. The next time you do it will be twice as fast. Okay, so yeah, I see what you mean here. It comes out just a little bit, but I can tell how pushing it together is sort of going to give it the strength it, that it needs. Exactly, and that is what's going to lock this whole thing together. Maybe I do need to. And that is the innovation. Pop this out. I used to do it like that. Oh, I see. And then you just put one on either I put side. One on either side. I think I'm going to be able to manage it with this. There. Here. Okay. So when, when you get that done, you want to push it together, squeeze it, and you'll actually hear it pop. And, that's, okay. and then you need to make sure it's flush. So now you're going to push down. Come over here real quick. Use those muscles. I don't have many of them. And that's it. Okay, looks pretty solid to me. Okay, so we got this piece. Very strong. Mm -hmm. Sits there. I mean, you can show it's it's strong that way. Set her down. Grab a roof. So the roof pieces. There you go. That's, Thank you. that's your size. Now, when you push this in, pick a side. Kind of go down an angle. And you put it in and roll it back. There we go. That's it. Now before now now let's say you wanted to put a miniature. So let's you know, let's, let's take one of these cyber kids. So remove the floor. Cool. Put the cyber miniature at the door. Take the fire in position. <laughs> Gotta turn it that way so you can see it. Awesome. All right, now put that back in. There you go, now you're inside. And if we want something to look outside, you can just push. Pop that guy out. Get in there. We've got other cyber kids. They're on a bike. Yeah, bikes inside, no parents, kids rule. Okay. okay. So now we can go ahead and make a, another story here. Right. Look at that. And it's done. And let's say, hey, let's put the dark, 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 uh, dark part on top. Oh. Flipped around. I like the dark part. Yeah. There you go. Then put miniatures on top and you're good to go. All right, now, while you did that, I have the same piece over here. I'm going to take this piece, like we showed, put it in an angle. There we go. And now, put her in there. Now, this piece, we were talking about locking to be able to stack. Mm -hmm. So, before I put this piece in, Actually, we'll just do it this way. So I'm gonna pop these off. Put these 
into the little locking nubs. So now we have our element here. So now if you take this, you can put it on top, but you know, you can bump it and knock it off. Also, what's not good about this right now is that there's, you know, it's sitting up. Yeah. So in order to get that right, you gotta lift it up. So to get that right, get the lift up. I'm gonna take these little clips. I'm gonna push them up in there. And these clips attach to any of the ceiling pieces. There's not yeah, special any, ceiling ones. Yep, Every, everything we did was pretty thought out. We made sure that all of the thicknesses are the same. So anything that's designed to clip to an edge can clip to a roof, can clip to a floor, can clip to a base, can clip to a tower, can clip to whatever. Um, and now we got our four corners. Alrighty. Now we will take this and we will lock that up inside. And these have to be put in just enough to get it to lock into position. All right, so then we can go ahead and put this on top and it's pretty stable. Voila, and you've got your stable building, it's good to go. And I'm putting some weight on that. And there yeah. is to it. So again, remember there are models in there, so don't destroy the <laughs> models. So let's go ahead and take it apart one more time. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and take the top off. Yep. Get rid of that, boy with the bike. And then this just. Yep. And if, you know, once you're at home doing your thing, you can also just leave the clips on if you want. Yeah. I mean, it's you just decide what you want to do with it. Metropolis. So of course, if you haven't checked out our Kickstarter yet and you like what you see, which we really hope you do, uh, go check out Monster Scenery Metropolis. Uh, there are all the buildings that we showed you today, um, some additional patterns that you can see in the back that we actually didn't have on the table. Uh, there's a bunch of add-ons to sort of decorate your city and get it looking even more realistic than we had it here. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff. And there's a lot more cool stuff coming to pay out. So there sure is. What's great about this is that a lot of them are graphical elements, so it's just a matter of changing up the graphics and you can do some neat things. Um, last thing I'm going to show as well is um, we had a someone on Instagram say, hey, I noticed that it looked like you guys had a sliding door on one of the buildings. So when you look at this, I'm going to go ahead and the windows can pop out like we showed before. Windows can come off and I'm going to put the window back in. You can also on the door piece here, you can pop that door out. So that comes out, and now you've got your door element that pops out. And I'm gonna pop that door element in, because this also now can be done like this. Now you got the big element. Mm -hmm. And of course I don't have one with me, but I have a clip, and in the next video I will show this, that there's a clip design to go <coughs> here to here. So that allows you to put that element here, allows you to slide the door over like this. Uh, if you go back through our feed, um, there's some really cool pictures of some of the models we had in a warehouse doing a, doing a gunfight for the cyberpunk range. And that was all done using these same pieces. So um, it's a lot of versatility with a, like a small number of parts. Yes. So great. So our first uh, Kickstarter video here, um, you'll be seeing Sophie a lot more than me because I think she is way better in the camera than I am. And uh, we're going to try to put something up every single day. So um, if you guys have any questions, put comments on either on our Facebook or on our Instagram. And our handles are? We are MonsterFight31 on Instagram and Twitter. And Facebook, we are just MonsterFight Club. We are just Monster Fight Club. Perfect. All right. See you on Kickstarter.